Hello! Today we are having a short video sketch I'd like to call Visiting Amelia. I've noticed lately that such gifts have become very popular. They are usually used as a package for alcoholic drinks, uh, as a rule, as gifts for men. Such a composition meal. Here there are a lot of opportunities for your imagination. One can use different patterns. Here you can see the rope. Here the rope combined with a plain weaving, regular cotton weaving with some varieties. So it gives you an opportunity both to satisfy your creative itching and at the same time to create an interesting souvenir. Or if you feel like making a composition, you can supplement a meal with a meal's yard. A well, a bench, hand cart. You can add a ladder, so you can invent on and on, if only have a wish. First of all, we weave around bottom in any technique we know. It doesn't necessarily have to be decorative, because it will be hidden and unseen anyway. So it can be the simplest one. As usual, after having woven a few rows, divide the tubes at first into couples, and then in three or four rows separate each tube. We have finished the bottom, hidden the working tubes, and in the same way hide the side poles. I insert them into the underside, which lifts uh, the edge and makes the meal more stable. I grab three or four rows. This way we complete the support for the meal. We finish the bottom instead of uh, lifting the poles for the fans because uh, I have made my first meal this way. I have made the transition, lifted the poles and have woven the fans on these poles. But it makes weaving the meal itself very inconvenient. So I've decided that it is easier to weave such a cake at first and then to weave at first a meal from this cake and only afterwards to make a fans around it. Now take some tank. I have chosen a glass jar. It is the most convenient form for working. It has a very smooth surface and it will be very easy to take it out without any troubles. And now look. Here is the center of the jar. Look where the poles have to grow from look this way, somewhere between the 7th and the 8th rows. We insert the poles. This way we insert the poles between the 7th and the 8th rows. At this stage we are defining the number of the poles. If we are going to weave in the technique of a regular rope, it doesn't matter if the number of the poles will be odd or even. If you want to weave in the technique of a cotton weave, then the number of the poles has to be odd. And this big meal is woven in the pattern which looks like shifting bricks and they are also made on the odd number of the poles. 
So define it. This time I'd like to be using the technique of a regular rope, but uh, this uh, time changing the pattern, uh, imitating the brickwork. It requires an even number of the poles. And I start weaving the technique of a regular rope. To imitate the bricks, after having woven two rows, I change the color of the tubes. the dark one into the light one in the place of joint and consequently the light one into the dark one hiding behind the poles and continue weaving in the technique of a regular rope This way we weave two rows and then change the color and weave this way up to the required height. How we are going to regulate the height? Here we weave up to the place of narrowing the jar. I leave the jar, place some box or reel of thread or something else and continue shifting it, placing some fine pieces under the jar up to the required height. So we have woven up to the required height, finished weaving with a three tube rope. We've got such a tutorial. Take all the supports out. And the next stage is a spread and thick school glue. I don't make any edging here. Just cover with the glue thoroughly and as soon as it sticks together a little, cut the poles, pulling them upwards. It will make them almost unnoticeable, maybe just a little bit seen. Here you can see the final result. For forming the roof, for my latest meal, I was using a regular wallpaper. I have run out of flexible cardboard and decided to solve the problem like this. I take some wallpaper, Outline the big circle, cut it, bend it into halves, cut, and make cones of paper of the halves. Fix them with the help of a stapler. And the second one. Try to make gaps more or less similar. Why I make two layers? Because one layer will be too soft. To make it stronger, we make such a thick head of one circle. Here I, sp I spread glue, place the second head on top, and afterwards we work with the tubes. For the roof, I take a bunch of the tubes. As a rule, I use the waste tubes. Because I am going to paint the roof afterwards anyway. That is why I use all the remainders I've got, connect them either with a thread or with a piece of rubber from one side, and then unbend the tubes accurately in different directions. Try to distribute them in different directions more or less regularly and then turn and place it onto the desk and here I distribute them more thoroughly. 
to make them lie in one row in the same plane. I have distributed the tubes. Then I cover the base prepared for the roof with rather thick white glue. and stick the tubes onto this base and place it into the woven base of the mill and distribute the tubes. Try to avoid bending the roof. You can distribute the tubes a little more in some places where we have gotten the gaps with no tubes. Fix with weak clothes pins. Why do the clothes pins, clothes pins have to be weak? Not to leave any prints. Especially in the places where it parkers, I fix it with clothes pins. The next stage. After the first layer of the roof we have fixed has dried a little, we see there are gaps. We try to fill the gaps with the same waste uh, as tightly as possible. The tubes that are unlikely to be used anywhere else, the ones that have been either rolled or painted unsuccessfully, cover with uh, thick PVA glue. Here I can place a thinner tube. Cut the pieces and fill the gaps with the pieces. And fix the new tubes with a closest pin. That is all. Pass on to the next section. As for painting, I use different techniques. I have tried this method and I like the result. You can already see it and let me tell you how I have achieved it. I have painted such mixed very different tubes with the following mixture. I have added some color into school glue. The color is very rich, so you need very little of it. I haven't measured the volume, I have just dropped a little bit a couple of times. It came out too thick, so I've added some water. You see the thickness, like sour cream, and I spread this mixture onto the roof. You don't need much water, because otherwise you will get stains. The color is dark and brown and rich. When it dries out, it will be still less transparent. So I paint the whole roof with uh, this thick mixture. And one more technique of painting the roof. While the roof is drying out, we are preparing the accessories for the meal. The door. To make the door, I have cut such a piece of paper, made the top round, and then, to make it faster, I stick the tubes with a hot glue gun instead of white glue. Thank you. 
şekli. I alternate the direction as you can see in tips to make it more or less smooth. This way and probably one more. It has stuck a little and cut along the outline. The last detail is a door handle. That is all, the door is ready. The only thing left is to cover it with a hot glue gun and to stick to the mill. And one more accessory is the rolling part of the mill. To make the veins of the mill, I place two tubes crosswise, crosswise and two more. Connect them with a glue gun to finish the process faster. Press and the button made of tubes press very tightly to the veins crossed. That's all. Hold for a while until it sticks together tightly. And then I have the pieces prepared beforehand. Four pieces in each bunch. You can wear the lens, for example, 9, 7, 5. I mean the longer tubes, the shorter ones and the shortest. What we do? At some distance, random distance, we do everything random. Or you can measure and mark the points, of course, but you can equally do it by eye. So we stick the crossbars of the meal. And to sum up, I'd like to add some words as for what you have to pay attention to when making such articles. To my mind, first of all, the parts of the article have to be of contrast colors. If the light pieces are placed against the back, the dark background and vice versa, the article looks more expressive. Here I felt like imitating the brick lane, but because of lack of contrast, the article seems to lose. So contrast is the first thing. The second thing I'd like to draw your attention to is the proportions of the pieces of the meal. Compare the size of the roof here and on this article. Here the meal is higher, but I was saving the tubes and decided to make the roof from the halves instead of the whole tubes. I have bent them into halves and the roof has come out a little too short. But I'm not going to leave it like this. I will either change the places or make a different roof. I mean, compared to the height of the roof, the roof has to be more proportional. In this case it has to be bigger. As for the accessories, the doors. If you want, you can make a fence, flowers, bags behind the fence. Everything is only limited by your imagination. To my mind, it is good, first of all, as a package for alcohol. But you can also make a smaller meal and, for example, present your friend with tea or coffee and invent some corresponding accessories to add instead of liquor glasses. Maybe some pouches of herb. So you can invent and improvise and use a meal for packing any gifts. That's all. Good luck and good imagination to everybody.